Hi, I'm Daz. Um, this is my Sailor Type 16T radio. I've just picked this up recently from a radio rally at quite a good price. But uh, the question is what work will need to be done on it. As far as I understand, it's transistorized. It's got internal batteries um, and it can take a 12 or 24 volt external power supply. Let's just turn it round. Sockets for directional finding aerial, normal aerial, speaker, phones, power. And on this side, what have we got? A battery box. That's good. Let's look at the controls. Meter looks like it's seen a little bit of sunlight, it's a little faded. There's controls for the power supply. The aerial filtering and there's a BFO which is good sensitivity volume wave range and scale tuning there we go and that's yeah that's functioning so it looks like it'll cover top band and 80 meters on the amateur side Right, let's have a, this cover off and have a quick peep inside. Uh, drop that. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't know if there's enough light for the camera to pick up, but yeah, interesting design. Um, and it looks like it's full of four-legged four tin whisker shorts. Mm, not so good. Just removed the uh, just removed the battery box, and there's a voltage switch that's set to 12 volts. There's some hefty resistors there, so and some more four-legged short circuits. Okay, so I've uh, cherry rigged the side. Make sure the polarity is right. Switch a couple of times, make sure it's clean. Set the power supply with current limit 150 milliamps, and now I'm just going to bring it up gradually over a period of time and just see what happens. Oh, that's quite a current draw 1.4 volt. I think I'll leave it there for a little while. I've reached the DC heights 5.5 volts, and there's 200 milliamp being drawn. I I'm not going to go any higher. It is possible that this push for lamps isn't working. So it's possible I've got lamps in circuit as well, but there does seem to be some audio amplifier life, which is good. But, uh, I think it might be time to open up and have a look. Just looking at the underside, a lot of beehive capacitors there. And a uh, nice three wave wafer switch, so must have a front end, tuned front end. This has been the audio output. There's a couple of transformers, so push pull. Look top. Interesting construction. I've never seen sideways mounted IF cans before, that's intriguing. There's a couple of resistors there, I think, if I remember rightly, they're for. 12 and 24 volt operation. I think that's probably a choke of some kind. I'm just looking at this mechanism, there is a, a little switch there for the lamp, but I can't quite work out how this bit of rotating metal is supposed to operate it as yet. As expected for something that's been on the sea, I notice there's a a bit of corrosion on this uh, thermistor here 
on the output stage. Well, a little bit of patience and waiting. I've now managed to creep the voltage up to 10 volts. And, uh, yes, there's some signs of life. Um, that's good. I think I want to change some electrolytics next, because I wonder if I've got some leaky electrolytics. Yeah, so that, that's good. At least there's some life. Um, I was convinced that uh, the AF117s would be short circuit, but uh, maybe they've um, untin whisked themselves, so I might be lucky. Another day, and I'm working on the sailor again. Um, all the capacitors have changed and the audio is better now. Now I'm addressing where the lack of sensitivity is coming from. I've noted that um, when I listen to my local radio station, which is just three miles away, um, medium wave station, it's very, very weak. When I turn up the gain control at the front, it becomes more noisy. And I've also noticed if I put my fingers around the front end transistor here on the left, it um, comes in a lot stronger. And the DC voltages are not looking right, so I'm going to investigate to see if there's a problem with this transistor or what's going on. Okay, I'm just probing the uh, first, uh, I'm just probing the RF transistor, the RF input stage. Emitter, nearly a volt, base, keep the camera, uh, 1.2 volts, and collector, 1.078 volts. That doesn't really seem right. That, I wouldn't expect the transistor to be saturated like that. When repairing something, it's always said you should look for visual clues. I think I missed this one. If you look at all the transistors. Notice they've all got coloured leads on. Including the converter. But look, the RF um, amplifier transistor doesn't have. If my hunch is correct, it's been replaced and it's been wired up incorrectly. Oops, didn't spot that. Okay, I've just pulled this uh, transistor out. Let's see what happens. Right. That's quite high. Ooh, that's leaky. Very leaky. That might explain. Let's try another one. Okay, it's another one I pulled out of a, a radio I had here. Looks a bit more realistic. That looks a bit more realistic. Right, I'll throw that in and let's see what happens. The state number two, and that was not checking if there was a short to the case. Okay, so what I did was I um, unsoldered the transistor, soldered collector base and emitter together, and popped that across the um, power supply, so emitter base collector and the screen connector. Had the power supply on about 5 volts with it current limit and that seems to have cleared the fault so now it's functioning fine with the screen connector but the question is do I leave it like that? Um, I do have some other slightly newer uh, germanium transistors I could try um, and see if um, they'll work but I, I'm not sure whether to leave it original or not. The other strange thing was of course the fact that um, the two connections were uh, switched the base and collector, so that wasn't too clever. Um, I should have really realised that, seeing that there was no sleeving on the uh, leads of the transistor in the first place, so I think I missed that one. Um, I would have saved myself a bit of time, perhaps. But there we go. Um, you live and learn, as they say. You live and learn. Unfortunately, it looks like the uh, meter is defunct got an external one on. I've connected to the battery input so that's the battery test. 
I've got nine and a half volts, so that's not far wrong. Um, to use the signal meter, you've got to have in the directional finding position, and then once you've got it in the directional finding position, when you tune across stations, it does increase. But the other issue, of course, when you're in the directional finding input, that's a low impedance input, so mm, I don't know really if it's worth. Um, trying to repair the meter because it wouldn't work when using it for say normal broadcast use any directional finding unless of course you modified the switches on the back of the uh, um, aerial switch but uh, never mind I, I guess such a finely wound meter if you get a little bit of uh, corrosion in the air I guess it may have corroded it well, it works, but I wouldn't want to use this as an amateur receiver by any means, I don't think. And it stays there. That's the big advance in that. And that's the only Very lively on medium wave now. Okay, so I'm just sorting out a power supply for the radio. Um, it's got a Zener diode in it, so I can have an unregulated 12 volts without a problem. Um, I found a uh, 12 volt linear power supply in the loft. The only problem I've got now is a lovely dose of modulation hum. Oh dear. If I earth it, it goes away. What I suspect is, is it's the uh, diodes in the power supply are not bypassed, so I think that's the cause of the problem. I can either connect it to mains earth or through a capacitor, but I think I'll try putting some capacitors across the rectifier and see if it uh, addresses the issue. Luckily this power supply actually comes apart. Okay, so it turns out when I look at the PCB on the power supply, there's a position for four capacitors already. So I've fitted them now, and the problem's gone away, hooray. So there we go, so modulation hum has been fixed, so now I can use it without an earth or with an earthed aerial. Of course a note to say that uh, please don't modify mains power supplies unless you know what you're doing, it uh, goes without saying. Okay, so I've got my radio going, it's a... Uh, a nice looking radio. I'm sure it looked very very nice um, on a boat <laughs> at the time and I noticed it's got a couple of uh, hooks at the top to uh, allow it to be mounted on the wall or whatever. But I, uh, what, what attracted me to this radio is the big dial at the front. I'm a bit of a sucker for a big round dial. Um, okay so the meter's damaged. I'm going to look out for another meter and see if I can find one. Um, and the fact that the dial light switch doesn't work, I'm not bothered, I've just made it permanently on now because I, I like the dial light to be on. Um, I didn't uh, do anything to the IF stages or the front end because everything seems pretty on alignment so I decided to leave it alone. The IF appears to be 470 kilohertz, by the way, just if that's of any uh, use to anybody else. Anyway, um, I think that's about it on this one for now. Perhaps I might do a little bit more work on it later, but thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you on another video.